What's the difference between correlation and convolution? Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com and today we are going to talk about differences between correlation and convolution and how to compute correlation using convolution. This topic is important because correlation and convolution are two distinct operations, mm -hmm. but in recent years, also due to the rapid rise of deep learning, these two operations are often confused because in deep learning you can sometimes use correlation instead of convolution and it's easier to implement. But in this video we'll see that there actually is a difference. Over the course of previous videos we defined convolution of two signals as taking them, inverting one of them, shifting and then multiplying their values and summing them up. Correlation is defined in a similar way, but we do not invert the second signal. So again, we have our two signals, but we only shift one of them, then we multiply the values and sum together. As you can see, uh, these definitions are quite similar. What do we need correlation for? Correlation can be thought of in signal processing as a measure of similarity. It means that if we have two functions and we calculate the correlation of these two functions, then this correlation function for two different signals called cross correlations tells us how similar are these two functions, these two signals, for a specific lag in samples or in time. So again, we have two functions and at the beginning they are not shifted with respect to each other. We then multiply their values and sum them up and we obtain one value one sample of the correlation function. Then we shift them by one sample. Again, we repeat this procedure of multiplying their values and summing. Then we increase the sample lag more and more and obtain the values of correlation function for arbitrary time lags. If we calculate the correlation of a function with itself, it's called autocorrelation and autocorrelation measures self-similarity of a signal. And as you might guess, this self-similarity is highest if there is no shift in samples, but other peaks of this autocorrelation function can help us determine, for example, the periodicity of the function at hand. It is also used in music information retrieval for example, when we want to estimate the tempo of the music piece that we're analyzing. So how are the convolution and correlation related? Once again, convolution takes two signals, inverts one of them, shifts it, then multiplies its values and sums them up. In correlation, we don't have this inversion. We just move one signal forward, then multiply the values and sum them. Here we have an example, convolution of two signals and cross correlation of these two signals. So as these two concepts of convolution and correlation are quite similar even in mathematical formulas, there are a lot of properties that are somewhat similar for the two of these. Is there a way to compute correlation using just convolution, it turns out that there is. After necessary derivations, it turns out that if we flip one of the signals, then convolve them, and then at the end flip again the output of the convolution, we obtained exactly correlation. This can be easily proved, not only mathematically, but also on a practical example in code. And such an example is in the related article over at dwolfson.com, which I have linked to in the description below, and I highly encourage you to check it out. Can we use this similarity of correlation and convolution 
to our advantage. It turns out that we can. Thanks to expressing the operation of correlation through convolution, we can use the fast convolution concept and arrive at a fast correlation algorithm. And if you want to learn more on fast convolution, I highly encourage you to check out one of my previous videos, which also you'll find link to in the description below. We can also express some properties of correlation using the star notation of convolution and also reason about correlation properties using some analogies to convolution. But we need to be careful because correlation, for example, is not commutative. So we always need to pay special attention when we want to extrapolate convolution results to correlation. In summary, correlation differs from convolution in that we don't flip one of the signals before multiplying them and summing them up. Nevertheless, we can still use convolution to express correlation. Both of these, the mathematical proof and an example in code of this correlation via convolution concept are in the related article over at dwolfsum.com, which I have linked to in the description below. I highly encourage you to check it out. Other than that, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel, uh -huh. hit the thumbs up and turn on notifications in order not to miss out on the upcoming videos on convolution. Thanks for watching and take care.